I am your host and writer behind 99geek.ca, Andrew Getze, and this is being recorded on uh, Friday, January 8th, 2021 at 6.41 p.m. My goal in life has always been to write for television, but it's a goal I've had little luck so far in attaining. So instead, I've resorted to self-publishing novels on Amazon, but writing the monthly chapters like episodes of TV shows that people can download at patreon.com slash 99geek. Every chapter is released in four parts, a teaser, and three acts, and every month features a different book spanning both science fiction and fantasy and every genre in between. That's right, I wrote all the books featured on this podcast, working nights at a local gas station to make ends meet until very recently. I live in what feels like a poverty nightmare, living off of employment insurance, praying to God I managed to make it as a writer before the night shift cognitively destroys me for good. I can feel it eating away at me year after year. If I could only find an audience or an agent or help of any kind, but I have nothing. No backup, no support. I'm completely alone, pro bono, with nothing but my passion for telling stories, and thus I ask you not to judge me or my work or my production values too harshly, especially today. Um, yesterday, when I went to do the weekly, the Geekly Weekly, I found out that my mic no longer works with my laptop. I don't know why. Um, currently, I'm using the built-in mic with the laptop. That's the only thing I can get to work on this thing. Um, I'm doing it through OBS now um, because that seems to have, do a better job of like uh, tweaking the audio. I've even managed to tweak it a bit further than it was uh, with the Geekly Weekly, so hopefully it sounds a little clearer. Um, yay. Um, uh, also, because I'm doing it through OBS, it means I can record uh, this in video, which I was going to wait to start in phase three. But uh, since it's pretty much easier for me to do it than not do it at this point, I'm, I'm just doing it now. So uh, this is my first time doing this video. Um, my apologies that this is one of the last uh, chapters of this book. Um, new stories will be starting soon, coming March, I guess, if not sooner. Uh, I'm doing the best I can with no money and no time. Tonight we'll be reading from Phase 2 of Season 1 of 99% Geek, a chapter of a book entitled Isabel Tsung, Voice News. Remember, you can follow along at patreon.com slash 99geek. Chapters are somewhat standalone, but at least make sure you start on Week 1 for the recap. This is Week 1. This is chapter, or episode number 5, of Isabel Tsung, Voice News, entitled um, the, A Dance with the Wind. Sorry. It's entitled A Dance with the Wind. And so we begin... With week number one. Previously on Isabel Tsung Voice News. Isabel Tsung is a reporter for Voice News, the most stubborn, tenacious supporter the upstart Canadian based international news network has ever known. Focused on bringing the people the honest truth without all the bullshit, Voice News does things a little differently from other news outlets, and Isabel is showing them the way. She's uncovered stories of feral child gangs and corrupt American presidents. She stands up to authoritative figures and is a voice for the victimized and powerless of the world. And when she received a text from an, old, from an old university peer drawing her towards the story of a lifetime in Iraq, well, of course she was going to accept. With Australian philanthropist dude bro Greg Beckett as her cameraman and translator, she bullied her editor-in-chief into buying two tickets onto the next flight into the Middle East. Arriving in Mosul, one of the cities most affected by the fight against ISIS, they made friends with the struggling locals, including a man named Aram and his grown son Ahaim. They also met a boy named Muhammad, whose parents had died in the chaos. It wasn't long before they were taken by the Iraqi government and given an exclusive interview with the Prime Minister. The man allowed Isabel to continue her investigations, but with a warning that she wouldn't like what she found. Touring the city with Aram, she and Greg uncovered a no-go zone, and the freshly discarded corpses of civilians rounded up by the military. Greg was meaninglessly killed by the cruel Iraqi soldier Omar, and Isabel was taken prisoner and tortured. She would have died were she not rescued by a warrior woman named Alia, leader of a resistance fighter group that knew the now deceased Susie, the university friend who had set Isabel on this mission in the first place. They escaped the city to a secret resistance base where a ceremony was taking place to honor the dead. During that ceremony, Aram and Ahaib were interrogated, Aram being mortally wounded before revealing the location of the resistance base. The military attacked the base during the ceremony, and Alia's team, consisting of Hassan, Naim, Yashish, and Ayan, managed to hold them off, but they know their victory to be a hollow and temporary one. Their base was no longer a safe space for them. This is book or season one, um, episode or chapter five, A Dance with the Wind. Released on January 2021, 
at patreon.com slash 99geek. It will be released, about to be released, after I finish this. All right. The kettle whistled, and Ahim emptied the boiling hot water into the large bowl, dunking the, his cloth and continuing to wipe the blood and dirt off his father's face. This was his third pass, and with the finishing touches complete, he wrapped his father in a simple white linen cloth. Lifting his father's body from the bar, he carried his father into the back and out the side door, to where he had already dug a grave. Laying his father within it, making certain his head pointed to Mecca, Aheim wordlessly filled the dirt back into place. The whole time he went through the motions, the ones he had seen other people perform a thousand times before, his mind was blank. He felt numb, empty. He wasn't thinking about how much it sucked that he had to do it all himself. He wasn't thinking about how much he was going to miss his father. He didn't even have memories of their past playing behind his eyes. He felt nothing. Nothing but a responsibility. A mandate to continue even if he was the only one left. With his job complete, a simple headstone placed atop the grave. A hind knelt down and placed a hand against the disturbed dirt. Finally, he allowed himself to remember his father's, smi his father's face, his smile. Ahim scooped up a handful of sand and scattered it across the grave. He spoke for the first time since his father died, though there was no one around to hear him. Allahumma gafir, li hayina wa mahitina wa shahidina wa gabina wa sagrina wa kabrina wa takarina wa untana. He spoke the traditional funeral, funeral prayer. Alahuma man ayahayatu mina fa ahi alal his islam wa man ta wafayet tau mina fa ta wafahu alal imam. Alahuma la tarima ajrahu wala taftina bada. It was a prayer asking God for forgiveness and protection from grief. The truth was, he wasn't even sure he believed in any of it, but his father's only family. But as his father's only family, it was his duty, his responsibility, to carry out the ceremony as faith faithfully as he can as he could. A chilly wind picked up in the alley beside his bar, his chosen spot for his father's grave. For the first time, Aheim realized that that night had fallen. He hadn't even noticed the time pass. Placing a candle in front of his father's headstone, he lit it with a match and took a step back. The flame on the wick of the candle danced with the wind and threatened to go out. Oh, he, he did it. He said the title. Sorry. Uh, but it did not go out. I'm sorry. Said a, that was a, <clears throat> I'm sorry, said a voice behind him, though Aheim hadn't heard anyone approach. He recognized the English accent immediately and felt relieved to know Isabel had gotten free of the government's clutches. It is not your fault, Aheim said, the words thicking in his throat. His mouth felt chalky and dry, and it was hard to talk. I'm still sorry, Isabel said, stepping, up, stepping up beside him and putting her hand on his arm. Aram was a good man, one of the nicest, bravest men I ever met. He always knew how to toe the line, Aheim said, memories coming back to him now like a flood. Exactly how much he could support the resistance without endangering me. He looked at Isabel with tears in his eyes. I was the one that pushed him to do more. He closed his eyes, struggling to remain composed. It was considered disrespectful for men to cry at a funeral. So what are you going to do with yourself now? Isabel asked him, as if there was any doubt. I will reopen my bar, Aheim told her. I will continue what I consider to be the right thing. I will continue to do what I consider to be the right thing. And eventually, the government will come for me just as they did my father. Then I will have a grave here, beside this one, and the cycle will continue anew until the final decent human being falls and there is no one left to bury him. He was surprised at himself, 
and at Isabel for not stopping him from getting it all out. And when that happens, he finished with a sigh. The greedy and evil will happen here at the earth, and civilization itself will collapse. He sounds Russian now, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the best I can do. We can end that cycle, a third voice said, and Aheim turned around in surprise. Alia, leader of the resistance, leaned against the wall of the alley, and with a sympathizing frown on her face, we can stop it here, today. So, had Alia been the one to say visible? My father's death. My, my father defended the secret of your hideout right up until the moment before his death, I am told Alia, hoping they might be able to get word to her resistance in time. La Bas, Alia said, telling him it was all right. Harabana Jemiana Besalam. Everyone had gotten out safely. Alia. Aheim spoke, not sure what he wanted to say to her. What a break. Uh, um. <laughs> All right, we can do this. And Alan took Tal Waladak. Alia spoke first, telling him he didn't kill his father. Rajul Arahid Hal Al Masul. The blame lied with only one man. Aheim nodded his agreement. Omar. He said, and he could feel the anger and hate boiling in him. Their head of security. Of their head of national security. Ikra Bishakal Akabar, Alia said, telling him to think higher. Haim squinted at her in the relative darkness. Nothing but the moon and the stars and the faint light of his burning candle to illuminate the shadows on her face behind her dark hair and loosely worn hijab. Despite not being able to make out her face, he thought he knew who she meant. Prime Minister Bahaim Abdul Abadi. A man stood around the corner from where he had been listening in out of view. And try thinking a little lower, he said, and Haim recognized the figure as another resistance member, Yish, Yish, another resistance member, Yashish. How many of you are there? Ahim asked, squinting in the dark to see. Isabel and Alia led him around to the front of his bar. As they passed Yashish, to east. At the corner, Aheim was shocked to find the street in front of his bar filled to bursting with hundreds of people. For how many people there were, he was shocked how quiet everyone was being, as he himself hadn't heard them approach. Where did... He started to ask in shock, but couldn't finish his sentence. He was rendered speechless. I told you we got everyone out, Alia said from beside him. Aheim shook his head, unable to believe his eyes. Did the government not... Again, he couldn't finish his sentence. I took care of that, Yushi said, following behind them. Aheim turned around to look at the youngest of the resistance fighters. We took all our livestock, you see, and stuffed them all into our cars and our trucks and any other vehicles we could find. I then set up a system to remote drive the caravan of vehicles out from our base and off in the opposite direction. The government fell for a ruse like suckers. Their entire military is out there right now, chasing down our caravan, all while we snuck back here into the city. Do you mind? Hassan, Alia's first officer, asked with a gesture at the locked door. They were all vulnerable, out in the open like that, and could very well get caught at any moment. Of course, Aheim said, unlocking his door and allowing the hundreds of people inside. But why would it turn? He asked the resistance members around him as he beckoned the civilians inside as fast as he could. I thought that you were going to retreat far from here. We've changed our minds, Alia told Aheim, a hand on his shoulder. If the president, Salim Talak, is behind everything, and we're going to hold him responsible. You want then? Everyone else had stepped out from the street. Now it was simply a question of whether he should join them or return to paying his respects to his father's grave. Alia's eyes watched him, waiting, and he knew she wouldn't judge him either way. What of the ayah? he asked Alia. Wasn't the ceremony supposed to go on for three days? And yet everyone was willingly everyone and yet everyone willingly chose to end it early and evacuate? The ayah is about honoring our beloved dead, Alia explained to him. 
The people all decided that this was the best way to do that. You ask what of the Aya, you're looking at it. And it's going to march all the way to the palace if that's what it takes. The cycle you spoke of. It ends by sunrise. Aheim glanced at the alley beside his bar. I want to honor my father, he told her, his mind decided. He followed her into the catamat and closed the door behind him. And that is the end of week one. I hope you enjoyed that because um, there's more coming. Yes. Um, trying to pull up the spiel at the end and end it while the going is good. All right, here we go. My name is Andrew Getsy. My brand is 99% Geek, found at 99geek.ca. I'm a writer writing monthly chapters of novels like episodes of TV shows, releasing them in four weekly parts, a teaser and three acts on Sundays on my Patreon page, this time on Friday, uh, at patreon.com slash 99geek. At the end of the month, finished chapters added to the PDFs attached at the bottom of every post. Finally, the finished books are self-published on Amazon. There's urban fantasy tales about a teenage girl turned into a vampire against her will, or a scorned lover investigating paranormal phenomena, or a journalist covering news and politics in the Middle East. There's a sci-fi story about people on a dying world trying to build a ship to a new one. There's a fantasy story about a fallen angel trying to stop the end of the world, and there's more coming. And it's all attached to the bottom of F eat every post on the site in convenient PDF format, readable on computers, tablets, ebook readers, and phones. I also have a geekly weekly blog and host video game playthroughs and matchmaking streams on Twitch and eventually post them on my YouTube and Patreon pages. So stay tuned and maybe subscribe. It's only a dollar and the support you show will go a very long way, I promise. There are also higher tiers. Give five dollars one month and you can name a character or a location or suggest a thing you might want to see. Basically, you get to give a noun, and then I promise I can. Uh, I promise to incorporate that noun into one of my stories somehow. Maybe not the same month you give the suggestion, but within one cycle of books, guaranteed. No matter how crazy, you can't sabotage me. I promise. You can keep giving nouns for every month you pay at the five dollar tier, or if you give ten dollars, you don't get two nouns. But you can give a description, describe the person personality of your character, or the look of your location, or the importance of your item. For ten dollars, you get a noun and a description. You can also give a dollar towards supporting my efforts at video game streaming or my weekly blog. If you don't want to subscribe on Patreon, you can also give at paypal.me slash 99geek, and for a limited time, the same rules about suggesting a noun apply there. You can write it below your very contribution. You can also write any other suggestions. I'm open to any sort of feedback. That's sort of what I want this to be, is um, a storytelling opportunity where people can actually um, add to the story and 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 help it grow so you're welcome to do that if you're new to this and you're like the way it sounds or you're old to this and you want to step up your support it would mean a lot um you don't even have to give money honestly money will ensure that i will um take your suggestion and use it um but even if you don't give money i will still take your suggestion and maybe use it i don't know i will leave that to my own um wants I'm as poor as it gets, living paycheck to paycheck, and sometimes starving, so I understand if you are too. I don't want to take food out of your mouth, so your attention is enough. Say something, comment here, or at the very least, follow me on Twitter at Andrew Getsy, or Instagram at WingCommander4, or email me at alton at gmail.com. Live long and prosper. May the force be with you. Long live Marceline the Vampire Queen. We are the 99% Geek. Stop recording. Stop.